So yes, as the government plans to table this bill in the parliament later this week, any time this week perhaps, we have a reaction now coming in from Himanta Biswa Sarma, the Assam Chief Minister, who's also spoken of the proposed changes to the Waqf Act. He says this has been a long-standing requirement, a long-standing demand. These reforms will do justice to the Muslim women. Now, uh, I have not seen the draft. I have not seen the amendment bill. Only I know that uh, Wakaf bill will be amended. That is what in media. And if it is true, then it is a long-standing requirement. And I think that reform will uh, give lot of justice to the Muslim woman. And I think that this is one step uh, which will be considered uh, for giving justice to the Muslim woman. And also it will ensure that the work of property goes to whom it should go. Let me go across to Payal Mehta joining us with more details. It was just yesterday that we heard that uh, the Assam Chief Minister has in fact spoken of the government's intent to announce life imprisonment for uh, life, life imprisonment law for love jihad as well. And now comes another strong comment from Himanta Biswa Sarma back backing the central government's move. We'll reconnect with Payal in just a bit. But yes, these are big plans by the central government to bring a bill to overhaul the Waqf Act, the current Waqf Act, in the ongoing budget session of the parliament and remember this development viewers can be expected any time this week it is learned that the cabinet meet held on friday evening in fact cleared the waqf amendment bill so it's a potential bill which could be tabled in the parliament and has already created the political fireworks across and we've seen those kind of reactions come in from outside parliament as well surely is going to be raked by several in the opposition with the opposition also raising questions uh, on whether or not all stakeholders were consulted, but more than that, the allies of the Bharatiya Janata Party were also taken into confidence when these deliberations were taking place. Let me go across to my colleague Arunima joining us with more details. Arunima, you know, while the opposition, of course, is amping up a certain pressure on the central government, asking of the details of, you know, the manner in which consultations, discussions took place, the central government, as per top sources, has come out to say it's not just different stakeholders, but uh, majority of the Muslim stakeholders who've come out and spoken in favor of these amendments and reforms. See, in fact, government is citing uh, such a committee report, judgments that have previously been given by various high courts, including a similar one from the Kerala High Court, where observations have been made about the working of the work board. What the government functionaries are saying at the moment is that this is not in isolation. There are members from within the Muslim community who have time and again raised the demand that there are requirements to change the way a Waqf board operates. For example, some are saying that the Bohra community feels uh, that they are, they are not uh, being given the full uh, you know, advantage of the way the Waqf properties should be utilized. There are other marginalized sections uh, within the Muslim community. Women, they are not stakeholders at all. Uh, they are not part of the Waqf board. So the government is saying that they are as much Muslims as those who are batting in favor of uh, the current law. And therefore, they ca the government cannot be put in the dock to say that here you are playing politics. The demand has come from within the com committee, uh, of various committees that have been set up at various times, including the Sachar committee, like I said. The demand is coming from within the community itself. And as far as the timing goes, that's the other question that why now? So the government is saying that it's not as if we are in a rush to pass this law, but this is a demand uh, from a section of uh, Indians and therefore we are legislating on it. Okay, all right. Arunima, stay on with us. I want to quickly take in a word from Pallavi as well. Uh, Pallavi, you know, the contention being that while uh, the properties included in the by the Waqf board were set to benefit or were aimed at upliftment, uh, you know, of the marginalized, it's the other way around. The reality on ground speaks otherwise and that's why these reforms are the need of the hour. And as Arunima was also highlighting, that's been spoken of and clearly emphasized on by several uh, Muslim intellectuals, women, the downtrodden, several of them who've spoken in favor of these reforms. But tell us about the central government's intent and what kind of amend amendments specifically are we talking about here? 
So the entire idea of the setting up the work board initially was that here would be one statutory body which is essentially under the nomenclature of the work board look after the welfare and progress especially as far as the work board is concerned of the Muslims. That was the entire idea. They were also exempted from income tax and the entire idea was that you get money, you get donations and you also say to it that it percolates down to those who need it. But over time there has been this complaint that first of all uh, the, the board has come to be concentrated in the hands of few influential, powerful and many of them are politicians cutting across party lines. They just become richer and richer and the benefits of the work board is not going to the people who it was meant for, that they are the downtrodden, the backward, even the women for example, who require that kind of an assistance. Uh, and therefore, there was no control on it, there is no check on it, they can do what they want to do, so there were a lot upon themselves. There have been sporadic voices and recommendations coming in from several governments even the UPA one, where many of those politicians and ministers would acknowledge the need to come about by changing the work board's working style. But you know, because of political compulsions, because the UPA did not want to tinker with its vote bank at that point of time, this was a proposal which was kept in abeyance. The government is saying that we are doing what really should have been done earlier. In the last cabinet meeting on Friday, 40 such amendments have been moved. Basically, the amendments are talking about ensuring that, first of all, a certain check up applies on the work boards, comes under a nodal ministry or the minority affairs and therefore that kind of a check will be taken on them, a check and a balance actually. Second, to ensure that the money is not concentrated in the hands of a few, that money actually goes forward as far as the backwards or even the women are concerned and they will be as much of a stakeholder as those who are holding that position as far as the work board is concerned. And here is where the problem begins. The, my, uh, the other political parties like the TMC and the Congress are seeing this as an attempt to intrude into their vote back. Absolutely. <coughs> the government making it very clear that this has got no, really nothing to do with religion. It's not uh, got to do with taking away anything from the waqf, but just ensuring accountability and greater transparency. Many thanks for that, Arunima and Pallavi. Let's talk about the host of other reactions that are trickling in and then we'll go across to more breaking news coming in. Premchand sir, the government bringing an amendment to the Works Board Act saying that this is being done to benefit poor Muslims, also to reform the working of the Works Boards. This is absolutely wrong. This is with an intent to the coming elections. They want to have something in the elections, especially in particular the Maharashtra State Assembly election. See, Works Board Act, what is the logical reason for having an amendment to the Works Board Act now? There is no logic, nothing importance, nothing, no recommendation, nothing has come before us. Whether any study the government has done regarding this. So immediately they want to have an amendment to the Waka Board Act and giving big propaganda that Muslim community is getting some privilege out of this act and discretionary powers are being vested with the Waka Board and they are having so many authorities so they want to disempower the Waka Board. What is the reason? See, against all the court of law, Waka Board is not, is not the ultimate authority. So the immediate intervention by the government on Waka Board is nothing but to, with an intent to have something in the Maharashtra State Assembly election and other State Assembly elections.